Okay, that's my time's about up. That would be fun. So, Coach, we didn't see Talon keep the ball and run it as much this week as we have in past weeks. How much of that is by design and how much of it is, is dependent on how the game is going? Well, it's, it's mostly by how the defense, what the defense, what the read tells them. So, uh, you know, since, since San Diego State, I mean, obviously the secret's out that Talon's pretty good runner and pretty fast. So the teams have, have changed the way they're playing our, our read game and they're doing more to box him in. And so we would like, we would like Talon to carry the ball more than he did. Uh, we had multiple reads called in the game. And again, he's, if you, if you were really watching that game, they, they blitzed us a lot in that game. They, they blitzed us off the edges a lot. They blitzed us on the inside a lot. So every, every blitz package they have changes the way their, their uh, contained players are playing on the perimeter. And that changes the read for Taylor based on are they squeezing, are they rushing up the field? And, you know, for the most part, they were, they were trying to make him give the ball. And, but we'd like him to run a little bit more. What was open on the last run? What did he see that allowed him to get 15? Uh, <laughs> I think that was more a case of it was, it was third and 11, and he thought that was our best chance to pick up 11. Like we were, you know, we were telling him in those timeouts, hey, we, you know, that's not how you want to start your, your four minute offense with a five yard loss. And, you know, it's tough enough to make a first down in, in four minute when it's uh, when you're making three or four yards. But when you're, you're minus five on the first play and we're telling them in between, hey, we can still get the first, we can still get the first, we can still get the first. And we weren't going to throw the ball at that point because we, we wanted to keep the clock moving and we wanted to make them use all their timeouts. So I think that was more a matter of him just saying, I'm keeping it and I'm getting it. You talked about using the bye week to work on passing and fine tune some of his mm -hmm. passing. Where did you see difference? Where did you see a progress made during the game? Specifically in what areas? Uh, you know, all, all of all of Talon's stuff really comes down to just his fundamentals, his his reads, his progressions, his footwork. And uh, that's you know, that's new that's new for him, especially the inside the pocket stuff. And I thought I thought he he did some good things in that area. Now he he was under heavy pressure uh, sometimes when they had they had more rushers than we had blockers, and uh, so so sometimes his his fundamentals looked worse than they really were because of the pressure. And we ma we made a couple mistakes not only in protection but in coaching on me that you know put him in in some bad positions. And he he made some really good plays uh, to move move the sticks and then. Uh, you know he's he's still growing in that area, and just like I said last week, he's a kid's going to do nothing but get better and better with with more experience, and especially like when you're the experience you get when you're getting blitzed every play. From my untrained, you know, non-football playing eye, it seems like he throws off his back foot a lot. Is that accurate? Or? Uh, I mean, a lot of quarterbacks throw off their back foot a lot, and so that's you know that's a that's something that. I mean, we like to talk about weight transfer. That's probably more important than back foot. Like you get your power from your weight transfer. But uh, you know, he's again, he's a, he's he's working on all of his fundamentals. And I mean, just pull up any NFL game. There's plenty of guys throwing off their back foot. They just get really good at it because they they practice it a lot. I think after the San Diego State game, you guys were talking about that, that Sam will have like a, a role in the offense. We haven't seen him since then. I mean, is there a reason for that, or is it just Talon's you know playing well enough? Yeah, it's a that's a that's just a, a delicate situation because you got to remember our we're trying to win, right? That's our number one thing. We're trying to win games. So like in any position you want to play a lot of guys, but uh I mean, again, I'll I'll go back to the NFL. You don't just throw your second quarterback out there for the fun of it when it's when it's real football. And Quoting Bill Parcells, more games are lost than won. I mean, like, you know, we're not we're doing a good job of not turning the ball over. We had one on a on the on the bounce up ball, good play by their safety, and, and Taylor was a little late on that. But hey, we're doing a good job of getting a lead and keeping a lead and not turning it over. And oh, by the way, our defense is pretty good. So uh, it's it's hard it's hard uh, coaching wise to say. All right, we're going to take Taylor out and put 
put Sam in, and I'd love to see Sam get in there. You know, maybe maybe if that game, if we don't have to kick all those field goals, and it's it a game could have been, you know, 28-7 in the first half. It's a lot easier than when they scored in the second quarter, and it's a all of a sudden it's back to a one-score game. So that's the same with all your backup players. The red zone first. I mean, you mentioned you know kicking field goals. You've obviously been around a lot of good kickers in the NFL. Where does a guy like Jonah Delmas stack up in, in your mind? Yeah, he. I thought even last year when I was watching, watching from a distance, uh, the kid's a good kicker, man. He's he's money. Uh, you know, inside of 50 yards, I, I always looked at it that way. Even in the NFL, I mean, those guys, those guys are are money probably to the mid 50s. But this kid inside 50, you know, he's money. That's why. It was so weird, even even though I wasn't at the game, to see him miss those two at Oregon State. And knock on wood, I don't think he's missed missed since. I mean, he just doesn't miss very often. And so, uh, our goal is to not kick field goals. I tell him that every week, I mean, dude. You're not going out there, except for extra points. And he just keeps making them. So, you know, we needed him. That's his job, and that's why I think he's Mountain West Player of the Week for his third time or something like that. How different is red zone play calling? Obviously, you probably don't have what. 50, 70 percent of your playbook because you're closer on in. I mean, do you and do you take in the fact that you have such a money kicker into maybe being a little more conservative and taking the points sometimes? Okay, well, I've, I've definitely, as a play caller, been very conservative in the red zone. There's there's no doubt about that. And uh, I'm going I'm going to just go back to all the things I just talked about. We're trying to win games, and uh, you you have less of your package in the red zone because of the, the field dimensions. Uh, obviously, some of that, some of your red zone plan each week is based on what the defense does. And so far, my experience with the teams we've played is they <laughs> they blitz a lot. You know, they blitz a lot in the red zone. So, uh, yeah, I, I I feel like uh, I've definitely been I've been too conservative as a play caller in the red zone. That that has nothing to do with the players. But again, we've been other than the. F- now 12 quarters, 10 of those 12 quarters, we've been playing with the lead. So that, that plays into it as well. Just in general, you know, talking about the red zone, as a coach, if you've got a better defense, are you going to generally speak to be more conservative if your defense isn't very good? Hmm. Yeah, possibly, possibly. And then, I mean, time and score, right? Time and score affects all play calling. And, uh, you know we've been fortunate to be to be playing with the lead, and we have a really good defense. So field position, and we we need to score touchdowns. I mean, like, hey, trust me, I know. I talk to the guys all the time. We got it. There's going to come a time when that you know those we can't be one for three touchdowns in the red zone. We're getting a lot of points in the red zone, but we we need to score touchdowns. We know that, and I, I got to do better with the play calling. They might contribute to that is the availability of a couple guys. How, how much do Ashton and George mean to this offense, and how much do things would change without them? Because, I mean, I know Tyler Crow does stuff well, but his skill set's obviously different than a George Helani if he's out there or something like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously those two guys mean a lot, and they're, they're two very explosive players. Uh, I feel like running backs may be our deepest position on our team. Uh, and, you, you know, uh, with Fato coming over from Utah State, what he did – you know, a year ago at Utah State, and what he's already done done for us, and uh, Tyler stepped up big time. He, you know, his his role wasn't to touch the ball a lot. That was a great catch he made on the wheel route. Uh, so I think running back's a deep position for us. Obviously, we'd love to have have those first two guys out there, but you know, we'll see. We'll just have to see how that goes. Does it change the way you call plays when you don't have those two, or get all four of them in terms of the play calling, despite this the difference in skill set, still be okay? Uh, it, it would probably change a little bit. Well, it seems like he has a knack for stretching runs and finding that cutback lane. Is that innate in him, or something that you've worked with him on? I have not worked with him. He he definitely he definitely had it when he came here. So I mean, he's got a great feel for for stretch and cut. He he's got a really good feel. And uh, you know, it when I was just hanging around practice, watching in fall camp. I mean, after he got cleared to practice, he got here a little bit late. And after he got cleared to practice, I mean, that became. Uh, readily available you could really see that right off the bat in him that he that he had that uh he's a tough guy he's really good in protection <clears throat> he's got excuse me he's got good hands uh the only thing he didn't do well is when we had that short yardage play when he was playing wildcat quarterback he didn't do a good job on the snap count 
But he don't, I think he'd had one rep at that before we did it, so that probably was bad coaching too. There was a bunch of wide receivers who got in. Uh, Eric McAllister had a big catch, obviously he said what Tyler Crow did. I mean, how have you thought the, the receivers did last week coming off the bye? Way better. I thought our aggressiveness at wide receiver and our route depth and our, our separation that you guys asked me about last time was a thousand times better, and we spent a lot of time on the bye week with that. Uh, Steph Cobbs didn't get a lot of chances, but that kid had a heck of a game. I don't know if you guys saw the play, the long pass to uh, Ashton, how much he hustled and the block he got on their number seven, who's a terrific player. I thought Latrell had his best game of the year. Uh, I, I thought the receivers, uh, McAllister's a guy that we're trying to expand his role. He's a playmaker. He's shown that in practice. And, uh, you know, we're trying, we're trying to get him in there more. We just, I mean, one, one for 44 is a good stat line, but he, he kept talking to me on the sideline saying two for 88 is a better stat, stat line. <laughs> and he's probably right. With Green, um, his decision to run or not, when you went back and looked at it, like you said the defense is obviously a big part of that. Was there some he should have or could have run with? Or there did was. he make the right? There was. Mark, Sam was warming up the final Air Force series. Yeah. I mean, was that in play? If they were to score and take the lead, you might, I mean, or did he do it on his own? No, he was he was warming up multiple times during the game. Sam, Sam was like, uh, who's your team, Phillies? Seahawks. See, no, baseball, Mariners. 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 He's like the Mariners bullpen. He was up and down a lot in that game. Sam, Seahawks. What do you mean, the Mariners? Okay. I just, <laughs> I don't like any of them, but. <laughs> All right, you guys have a